I took those four transactions and I bet on myself. And I went all in my degrees in marketing, um, background in HR, and I bet on myself. And I started marketing in any and every way. I used my money strategically um, from those four transactions and I poured it into marketing. And then I started playing with systems. I always believed I was gonna be bigger than what I naturally was. So right out the gate, I think two, three transactions and I had a transaction coordinator. I had a marketing team department. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was working on getting ISAs from transaction four, which were systems that were needed to be in place that we still use on a daily basis for transaction 88. So um, a lot of, a lot of um, strategic planning as far as um, what, would, what do we spend money on? What are we going to do? And really just making sure our name was placed out there. Um, and then a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. We do something that's probably different than most. I don't know what everybody else does, but I can speak for my business. You are listening to the Real Estate Proverbs podcast with host Kevin Jefferson. This is the number one podcast for African-American real estate professionals who are doing extraordinary things. It's time to tune in. And now your host, the people's lender, Kevin Jefferson. Kevin Jefferson. Kevin Jefferson. Kevin Jefferson. Welcome to the Real Estate Proverbs podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Jefferson. And today our guests are Jared and Corinne Caldwell. How are you guys? We're doing, doing well. well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. So uh, let's start with the lady. Ladies first. Corinne, tell us a little bit about who you are. So <laughs> that's a lot. Which hat are you wearing? Today? I know. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I'm Corinne Caldwell. Um, I am actually active duty military. I am a meteorologist in the military. Um, I run a $600 million a year portfolio right now called the Air Force Weather Weapon System. Um, and so I took, you know, kind of what I do on a larger scale with the Air Force, and I kind of scaled it down to then become a CFO of sorts, um, director of operations, whatever you want to call it, uh, for Jarrett and his business. Um, okay. So I'm a mom to two amazing little boys, Mateo and Dominic, and a wife to the awesome and amazing Jarrett Caldwell. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Which segues into Jared. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Very nice. Um, Jared Caldwell, the, I guess, owner, founder of JMD Elite. We don't really have titles. We just kind of just do our thing. Um, but yeah, we have been in business for the last four plus years. Um, in fact, that just reminds me, I need to renew my license. Working on that. It'll be done before the, <laughs> before the end of the month. Uh, but we're going on our fourth year with Keller Williams, probably our fifth year in the business. We started off at a small boutique real estate agency. Moved to uh, Keller Williams um, for the last four years or so. Uh, over the last three years, we have excelled our business um, tremendously. Um, first year being in business, full year was probably around four transactions. Second year in the business, 25 transactions. Third year in the business, 50 transactions. Last year in the business, 88 units completed. About 30 million in sales volume. Wow. Yeah, so okay. A, a big quick... Quick jump. Yeah, quick <laughs> jump up there. That's a quick jump. So let's get into it. Okay, let's do it. With the quick jump from four to 88 in four years, five years, whatever, four and a half years, right? Right. What, how'd you get there? Like, how did you get from four to 88? Because there are some people who get from four to 10 and maybe the two to 25 in the four years, but that's a, that's a huge gap. What, what was it that you did to increase your business that way? Great question. Um, my first year of making the four transactions, um, it was probably at the lowest point in, in life for me personally, I had finally made the decision that I was going to be a full-time entrepreneur. I was going to stop playing with this and we were going all in. And <laughs> when you, it's, it's really weird what happens and what can occur when you burn the ships. And so the first year we did the four transactions, I did not, I was very scared of the tax man. I didn't know what mm -hmm. that would consist of. Okay. Of course, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't know what that would consist of for um, tax purposes. So I didn't spend not $1, not $1 out of the four transactions. And that's where she comes in um, mightily because she's getting a check on the 15th or 30th for the last 25 years of our life. Praise the Lord. So having that consistency behind me, 
allowed me to save those funds until we understood how taxes and stuff worked, which now we've kind of become subject matter experts in on helping real estate agents become better um, formulating their LLCs and things along those lines. We'll get into that a little bit here shortly. Um, but I took those four transactions and I bet on myself and I went all in my degrees in marketing, um, background in HR, and I bet on myself and I started marketing in any and every way. I used my money strategically um, from those four transactions and I poured it into marketing and then I started playing with systems. I always believed I was going to be bigger than what I naturally was. So right out the gate, I think two, three transactions and I had a transaction coordinator. I had a marketing team department. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was working on getting ISAs from transaction four, which were systems that were needed to be in place that we still use on a daily basis for transaction 88. So um, a lot of, a lot of um, strategic planning as far as um, what, would, what do we spend money on? What are we going to do? And really just making sure our name was placed out there. Um, and then a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. We do something that's probably different than most. I don't know what everybody else does, but I can speak for my business. Um, once we got to year two, or yeah, it was year two. Year two. Um, once we made that transition to from four to 25, um, we started making a pledge each year, doing a little bit different. We learned the systems and the models that Keller Williams offers um, in the Real Estate Millionaire book that they offer. We learned those models and we figured out which one works best for us, but then we kind of flipped it. Uh, a lot of the models are based on other things, but we based ours on how much we want to give back to the community. Um, so we made a pledge our first year, um, once we started seeing transactions kind of coming through, that we were going to give back $30,000 to the community. We didn't have $30,000 to give. We started reverse engineering from that mindset of what we were giving back to determine how many deals and transactions it took to get to that $30,000. And each and every year we've increased that since then. Um, we believe in um, our business is Christian based. Um, the month of January is a complete month of fasting for us where we are seeking the Lord, praying and asking for guidance on how we should move forward. And we pray about how much we are going to give back. Um, so over the last three years, we started off with $30,000. Um, we ended up giving you already that first year around $36,000, $37,000, making that pledge. Our second year doing this, we pledged $50,000. We ended up giving about sixty-five. Mm -hmm. This year, we are pledging $75,000, and we're looking to see what the Lord is going to do for us. And that's amazing, man. Yes, sir. What gave you the vision and foresight to implement systems for transactions in like there had to be something that you read was it a mentor what great, what gave you that insight great question we i have been a entrepreneur for years i've read every and every book i could put my hand on in fact i think where me and her connected um was um, she saw the one desire to do something greater and she gave me my first, you know, book that kind of pushed me along, along those ways, um, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, that's where it started from. From there, I had found my quote unquote rich dad um, in the St. Louis area. And um, just through books and stuff and reading, I always realized that it's best to do what you like to do and then outsource the rest. Do what you do well specialize in that, outsource the rest. Um, I've always surrounded myself with people who are way smarter than me, um, who give me an opportunity to do what I do best, which is be in front of people and connect and make those connections and sales and transactions. My background is in sales. It's in, um, I've sold everything from <laughs> education to, <laughs> to cars, <laughs> to anything in between. I have sold it for a living. Um, so a lot of things that I do, I naturally do because this just was a part of, of what I did as far as my um, career was going. Um, so I decided that that's where my focus was going to be. I know how to market. I know how to sell. I'm going to pass along everything else that I don't like to do. One of the things that makes that, I think, really important within our business was as soon as he realized, okay, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. I'm not really learning this we went out immediately and we're looking for people to do that. I mean, he came to me and was like, okay, 
we're starting to get these checks in. I got a feeling we're going to get more. Like he always thought bigger. There was never a, it, he was always a visionary. And so thinking bigger, you know, that KW talks about bold and, and thinking bold and, and being bigger than what you really are. And he went out and was like, Hey, learn all of these, you know, finance classes, figure out what we can do with this money, figure out how this money thing works. Cause once we get the money thing working and the foundation of an actual business laid out correctly, the rest will start flowing in. It'll start becoming automatic and it'll become habit and you'll start to do things a certain way. And as soon as he set up those systems to become habit, it, it really started flowing. And to the point where we had to start getting more people and getting teammates and stuff like that. So, And I don't want to um, push past like we, we got this overnight or even in four years. I have been trying to break into real estate since 2003. Okay. I failed at real estate from 2003 to 2018, 19. I Failed. And when I say I failed, we didn't have anything. And I would put stuff on charge cards because it was the next best thing and it was going to work. And if you just, if you just trust me, babe, just trust me. I got it. I got it. And failing miserably. Well, he said that, <laughs> but I think it's important to note that he didn't have a license. This is only four years having an actual real estate so, license before we were trying to that's true. flip houses and flip contracts and being an investor. So there's a difference. There's a big difference. There. But what it taught me was there's a grind that comes from wholesaling and from investing that is a completely different grind than being a real estate agent. And if you can grind with them folks on the wholesale side and you can grind with them folks on the investor side, real estate agency, that's easy. Those people, Real estate agents like to sleep. Investors don't sleep. I can work with that. That's easy. <laughs> so it became a lot simpler of a transaction, a smoother transaction um, once I knew how to take my strengths and place it inside of what agents do on a daily basis. And if it's a, if it's a concept of me being outworked, I'm not, I'm going to bet on me all day long. Cool. So question, we're going to go back. Yes, sir. From the transition of investor, what made you decide to get your license? Great question. So I did not get my license for the longest because she's active duty military. Yeah, military. And okay. every two years as an officer, we were moving. So the consistency of moving, and I did not know enough to know that I could, I, if, I, if I could start today, this would be a whole different story because <laughs> I'd have my license and I'd have places set up in each of the states and locations that we were at. I, that's the way I would do it now, knowing what I know. But in the moment, I did not know that that was possible. I'd get there and try to get stuff started. And the next thing you know, I'd be having to move and I don't have anything in place to make sure these people are taken care of. And I'm starting my business and resetting it each and every time. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't think that was possible. Um, so I stayed on the investor side. And it's funny how the Lord worked when I would be on the verge of giving up with real estate. I'd be, I'm done. I'm over. We didn't, we didn't failed again, failed again. He let me close one transaction to make me see that there's a lot of <laughs> it in the tunnel. <laughs> It'd be something like, you know, $15,000. See, babe, I told you we could do it. <laughs> and it just happened once a year or maybe once every two and a half, three years. Like there was 10 plus years of failure. And right when I'm about to close the door, it would be a little glimpse of, if you get this right, this is very doable. This is very possible. Um, but that was the transition. When we came here from our last location prior to here was Korea. Um, she was on year 21. She's 25 years in active now. She said, this is more than likely my last location. Bet. I believe you. And I made sure I pushed all in right in that moment. Let me go get my license. That way you can't change your mind. We done. I mean, <laughs> so, we didn't even have a place. We didn't to have a place live. to live. I was. And <laughs> he was. We were in the hotel room, and I would go to work during the day, and he would go to real estate class at night. Yeah. And <laughs> watching the kids, because he he said he we have to go all the way in. We had a we had a plan. We had a you know a vision, and I mean, luckily it paid off. <laughs> yeah. We wrote. I wrote down so many crazy. There's a bold letter. You want to go grab that real quick? Go. I wrote so many crazy things. I have old journals of stuff that just was not possible. It just wasn't possible. And I wrote it out as though it was happening in that moment. And um, from the award ceremonies that we go to today, 
from being, you know, awarded A, B, and C for the transactions that's taking place. These things are happening. This whole thing about writing the vision and making it plain is a real thing. I don't even know when this letter is from. So it was a year before that. This is 2019, 19 okay. December 2019. Which you means know. I wrote it a year ahead of time. So what you do in bold is you write a letter to yourself to read the next year and they mail it to you. So one of the last assignments that's in your bold class is a write a letter to yourself talking about all the successes that you've had during this time, this year in between. And then once that letter comes, you're supposed to read it and see where, how you stacked up. And I haven't read this in forever. So he wrote on here, I've sold 8 million in real estate in my second year in the business. I have my team and I'm up and running and working on expansion. I finally have the business that I'm able to duplicate because of the things that I learned through bold and continued education. I'm purchasing my first duplex and ready for a multi and ready for a multifamily. Thanks for the boost in getting the to the next level. So that was attached with a check for $500,000, a fake check. But I wrote a check <laughs> for five hundred thousand dollars. Well, it wasn't a fake check; it was a a real check. Okay. But right you know, we yeah, the checks there too. We but. still keep these things; these these momentums. Um, I did do eight million my second yep. year. I did do that. We, did we do have a duplex, duplex <laughs> that we bought a. I'm not trying to brag, but I'm really bragging on the Lord. So it's not myself. We brought a six hundred thousand dollar duplex. That's outrageous to me. It's rented. We have a person on the downstairs. We have an Airbnb on the upstairs and we are cash flowing on this thing. Yeah. And these are all just thoughts, just randoms. This is what, this would be great if I could do this. Working yeah. on more properties at this time. The team is up and running. I am working on my expansion team. I have not read that letter in, in probably three years. So the fact that it said these things, I'm looking at it now still in disbelief, like these things are really happening. And Eight million. I'd be in trouble if I sold eight million today. <laughs> what, what's the problem? What happened? <laughs> the market's <laughs> crashing. The market's <laughs> crashing. <laughs> the market's <laughs> trash. It'd be a whole problem if I sell eight million now. So yes, God is good. I'm here so at you. so at this time, Jared, you're full time all in real estate. Yes, sir. Cool. Let's talk to Corinne. Let's do that. <laughs> this is this is the part that's important and people listening need to hear not only is your level of people don't understand your level of success they see you but she is very integral in it even if she didn't help you put in the systems that helped me in those days where we come home and we say i'm done she's listening to all of that so with him grinding and you know your husband and you know where you guys want to go, what was your mindset into what I need to do to be a helpmate? So um, I, when, I, when I first met Jerry, we, we've been married for 13 years. Okay. Uh, and I always knew that he had it. I didn't know what it was, but he had it. Um, he always talked bigger, thinks bigger. Like people used to laugh at him because of some of the like crazy ideas and stuff that he had. And I was like, okay, I can get with that, you know, but it, it wasn't too bad because it was always important for me to see where I fit in, in the vision. And if I see his vision and I see where I can help, then I was okay. So it was always important to me for me to identify what my job, my role, my function was within the vision that he had, regardless of how big it was. I was always like, okay, I can do this. I never tried to tell him, well, you know, you shouldn't think like that. But I also wanted to make sure that I brought a level of logic and reality to these visions and these, you know, these thoughts, these big ideas. Um, but it, it was, it was difficult. Don't get me wrong. It was difficult. Um, but the thing that never stopped was his drive. And that I think was the most important because if I saw he kept pushing, then I was like, okay, one of these days it's going to click. One of these days it's going to happen. Um, 
as long as he kept pushing and he wasn't, you know, just bumming it out on the couch and, you know, watching TV and not really trying, like every day he was getting up, getting dressed, like he was going somewhere, but wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but that's important though. You know what I mean? That That's important. It, it's important as a visual to be able to see that, you know, he gonna get this thing. What are these days? Figure this out. <laughs> I'm saying all the time. I'm figure this out. I but don't as, know. <laughs> as long as I could see, you know what I mean. Then I was willing to make the sacrifice. My only issue was being in the military. While that was a help, because it gave him the freedom uh, to be able to for us to live off of one paycheck, and it gave him the freedom to try all of these crazy ideas and everything. What happens when we found an idea that worked, and it was time for us to pick up and move? So it helped and it hurt at the same time because for the longest we had a good flow going and, you know, it, it would take him six months to get a good flow going. And then we only have a year that the flow is working and then it's time to pick up and move again. And it's like, he has to start back over again. And unfortunately the way our society works, if you have a man living off his wife or a man that doesn't have a consistent job, people look down on that, especially as a black man. Yeah. You know, everybody got something to say. <laughs> Don't nobody have no ideas to help out, but everybody got something to say, you know, and I told him, it's me and you. Don't worry about what everybody else is, has to say. And what everybody else has to say is not important. As long as we have a plan and we are in agreement then I'm okay with it because I, I see, I see where it's going, you know, and he would always tell me, you know, you got to see it before you can see it so that you can eventually see it, you know? So I'm you like, messed okay. up my quote, see it before Whatever. you see it or you'll never, <laughs> or you'll never see it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 as long as I saw myself in his <clears throat> vision and I saw his drive and how he kept pushing, I continue to just keep encouraging um, and just kind of, stay in my lane. I, I stayed in the military. I'm sorry, we got to pick up and go again. But you know, eventually, we'll get to that point where it's time for me to retire. And then we can just go all in full throttle. And that's what happened. So at what point did you see where you could be of assistance in his real estate business without actually getting your license? Uh. That first year when he sold four, we kept all of those checks. Yeah. We didn't spend them because we didn't know what the taxes were. We so didn't that's what them. so that's what you meant. You didn't spend a dime. I it's thought you meant you didn't spend a dime on marketing. You no. didn't spend anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> those checks were scary. Because they were big and they were all at once. We didn't know what the taxes were. We didn't have like an LLC. We Not properly. We didn't properly have the LLC say so everybody just kept saying, Oh, get an LLC, get an LLC, and then you get one, and then what? Like, what do you do with it? Like, what do you what happens? How does it work? How does the money flow through there? You know, and because I am, like I said, I have a background in meteorology, but my degree um has a minor in math and physics. So I knew the math part. If I could just get in the class and start learning this stuff. I could help us out. So I knew that first year when he was like, okay, let's just, we're going to sit on this money and see what the tax man say. And then we'll figure it out from there. And that's what we did. So I, I knew that first year. And then eventually I ended up making a business out of it. Yeah. Like I do bookkeeping for real estate agents. Cause I know how raggedy y'all are <laughs> in keeping books and organizing. Oh, since you trash, I know everybody else trash too. Let me make a whole business out of that. <laughs> and you'd be surprised. Real estate agents hate keeping books. Like y'all, that's we all y'all do is paperwork. We hate it. Y'all hate it. And I don't understand and made a whole business out of it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you go to the account with a bag of receipts. Like, what do I do with these? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am the king of taking. I was so mad at myself. We went out to dinner yesterday and I forgot to take a picture of the receipt and I beat myself <laughs> up all night. Like, that is an $80 bill that's supposed to be written off. And I just left it on the table and then yeah. think twice. I beat myself, been still beating up myself now. I'm talking to you about it. So <laughs> I'm king of take pictures of everything and just send it to her. And she has systems in place that as soon as you send it to her, it goes to the systems that she has in. It, it sorts itself out. And at the end of the month, she just has to do a couple clicks and everything's where it needs to be. Wow. Yeah. So 
So early, this is this is different. <laughs> yeah, I, it's different, and I say it's different just because early four transactions, and all of a sudden you like there's a better way and bigger system. Yes, sir. Like that, this is different. So going from year one to two, what did you guys implement as a team to get from four to twenty five transactions? consistency in the marketing whatever okay you do, whatever you decide to do do it consistently every single week we knew that the budget was going to be this amount and we we it was never in the account we we knew where it was going and we consistently had the flow coming in and coming out and um it's like novocaine eventually it's going to it's going to wear and it's going to actually start taking place and hitting um, you can expect to see X amount of ads up each month on Facebook. I know that my Facebook ad spend is is a tremendous portion of our business. Like that's the, we don't have a lot of overhead. We don't do a lot of, you know, outside stuff, but our marketing budget is our running machine for everything that we do. So from Facebook ad spends to Google spend um, to um, ISAs to make sure that these leads are getting cleaned um, because, uh, yeah, we did mailers for a while too. That's not consistent, but we did that. We've tried to knock on, on the mailers for a while. Um, but making sure that there was a consistent flow of, of opportunity is what I call it. Each lead is an opportunity. And um, we would like to have at that time frame, we knew we wanted to have a hundred plus leads a month. However, that came through and leads can be in any form, we got to clean those leads. Um, and cleaning a lead is, is a process in itself, but we need at least 100 plus leads to start working, formulating. Once we clean those, after you clean them, you might have about seven to 10. And out of those seven to 10, you might close two or three, but you need 100 in order to get to that, you know, that process. How, how, of a, how much of an impact did being on a military base help in your business as well? Surprising enough, it's twofold. I've only used and had one transaction from somebody that was at that she knew mm -hmm. and purposely. Um, the rest of the transactions, yes, we are five percent military veteran um, is our average client, just because we have so many military bases that are located to us. And being able to speak military, been through the process, I've done quite a few PCS moves. Um, she knows when certain things are occurring, as far as when. Um, PCS season is occurring. Orders are going out back and forth. I might be talking over those heads who aren't familiar with military, but being able to know it and speak it is huge. Um, but as far as connecting with people based off of who she has in her circle and sphere, my wife's an officer and she does not believe in flexing in any way, shape or form towards her clients or towards her troops. So I don't want you to necessarily feel any obligation to use my husband as your real estate agent. Yes, you're moving into town. Yes, I'm probably connected to one of the top agents in the area, but you need to find that out. You're not gonna find it out through me. So right. I have had one referral from my wife in this entire business, <laughs> just one, and it was trash. <laughs> 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 I got to be very careful, you know, be fraternization and that that's a thing. Yeah, like people right. People out a lot for that. So, yeah, no, I, I can't refer my husband to a lot of people because I got to be careful about the influence and stuff that I have over certain troops. So and whether she, you know, wants or puts that influence out there or not, it's it's assinuated. It could be. And we don't want anything that's going to put any type of detriment on her career at all. Um, so I told her I didn't want it. That's fine. I don't need it. So, okay. Ramping up business. Um, what was your thoughts after you hit that 25 mark year two? Like, what was the next thing that you guys as a team implemented to go uh, to transition? So we added a buyer's agent. Um, we found out 25 was, wasn't too bad. Each year, it feels like there's no way I can do another one. It always feels like that. Um, when I remember our 50th one, when we did our third year, I'll transition a little bit. When we did our 50th deal, I was still a, was I still a solo agent or did Brent Melanie come in at the very end? Right at the very end. She came at the very end. Um, so I did 50 transactions on my own and literally hit the 50th transaction on the last day of the year. We, we were shooting for 50. The Lord had told me 50. I believed that with my whole heart. And it took 365 days or 364 days 
to get there. And we got there done on the very last day of the year. And when I tell you I came home and I was spent, I was tired, that there was not another transaction that could take place in that moment because my mind, body, and soul was just tired. I mean that thing. Now come back to last year, I can't even tell you when transaction 50 happened. It just blew past. It was nothing. It was. It definitely gets easier. But I, I think that second year we we started looking because he was getting bent, uh, burnt out. And when you start, you know, being a solo agent and you you're literally doing this by yourself, you get burnt out really easily. So we looked for a showing assistant first. I did. That's good. So point. the showing assistant that. came first. And so we were like, OK, with a showing assistant, we'll be able to sparse out some of his you know, uh, clients and, and get, open up his schedule a little bit more and get him some help. Um, showing assistant, you know, not always being available or she being wasn't full time for me. Yeah. She wasn't yeah. full time because she was an agent herself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she was booked or two booked. We had more business than, you know, we had people. So we looked back at the MREA, we looked back at the book and we're like, you know, okay, which, which level are we at? Where do we need to go? So we looked at the level that we were in the book and the next level, we had the business to meet that level. So the next level was at a buyer's agent. So we started asking people, what does this mean? How do we do this? You know, what, what are we looking for? And people would tell us what you're looking for and, you know, a buyer's agent and, and a teammate and that kind of thing. And, you know, we sat down with, um, a couple people and then we sat down with one melanie and she'd been with us ever since yeah melanie is is definitely uh i think before i got on the phone i was like hey i gotta get off this call i got a zoom that's coming up soon but i'm helping her um with you know new systems that we're playing we're putting in place just this month so um she's been there for going on two years now and it was a great opportunity this past weekend or was it two weeks ago mm -hmm. oh, past weekend to share the stage with her we um ended up getting um, a VPAR right. Platinum Award, um, which is the highest ranking that you can get. And out of all the, there's over 7,000 agents here in the Hampton Roads area. And out of the 7,000, we ranked number 15. Our team did. Wow. And second, second black team, total black team um, in the, in the area. There was a, there's one that's ahead of us. We're coming, but it's not a race, but at the same time, yes, it, it was good to share the stage with her and she can see what her impact on our business was able to do. So that, that was very nice. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Who is the numbers watcher in terms of transactions, lead, conversion? Which one of you guys pays attention to that? It's twofold. Transactions, leads, conversion, that's all me. Okay. I'm constantly in the books because I'm still running the game. Like, um, and I've become more of a manager of leads, a lead manager than I have necessarily an agent at this point. I have my clientele is from is, is becoming more of referral based and repeat business um, over the last three, four years. So that's where a good strength of my my transactions come from. But I'm responsible for now Miss Melanie and Miss Beverly, and I'm adding hopefully another person. So I'm now doing more lead management and watching those transactions and how they are overcoming. Um, as far as the numbers, like overhead and, and business and making sure I'm not spending oh so much on marketing like I do every single month, <laughs> that'd be her. <laughs> She's the checkbook. <laughs> so, and and it's, it's a lot more. I think people, if I'm being honest, just by looking at the books of a lot of real estate agents, I feel like that's the weak link. Like knowing that there's a difference between working in your business, but working on your business. And I feel like that's the weak link in a lot of agents um, from leaving money on the table, like for taxes and stuff like that, overspending on a lot of things, not having a budget, not having goals, um, not just goals for transactions, because everybody sets goals for transactions, but nobody sets goals for budgetary. <laughs> And how money should be flowing in and through your business and how you should be paying people. And, and what's your, your average cost of revenue to be paying somebody for a marketing, you know, initiative or, you know, how much should you be paying based on the environment? Like, I think working on the business itself 
is a very weak link for a lot of agents. And until they can learn that concept of working on your business and not just working in and it. not just working in so it. So I work in it. She works on and it. I work on it. <laughs> and it just happens to be a good split that way. Yeah. Cause I would be in her same boat of what she's describing as the agent. That's not my forte. I know that's not me. I would have to hire somebody to do that. And that God forbid, I'd have to hire somebody to watch over money. Like, that would be a hard thing to do. And most people don't have that comfortability. And mine just happens to, to be my wife, which is just a blessing. Let me ask you a question, Jared. How much harder do you think it would have been to get from transaction four to 88 without Corinne? So I have a hard time telling my story because I don't want everybody or anybody to try to implement me into their scenario. This, without this, there's no, there's no JMD elite. It doesn't happen without her being there. Um, for the simple fact, the steadiness of the paycheck, of uh, being able to hold on to four checks. I mean, that was the that was the change. That was the life change of our business. Being able to hold on to four checks to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with this money? And actually not have to worry about bills not being paid, food not being on the table, clothes not being on my back, and a roof not being over my head. That was all still here. So without her being there, it doesn't give me the opportunity to think. It doesn't give me the opportunity to not have to be reactive. I literally got to step into the business and not have to worry about life. I'll take care of life. You go make this business happen. Absolutely. That's a fair trade-off. And to this day, like not trying to get too far involved in our life, we still live off of one paycheck and it's not mine. I make a lot more than she makes. We live off of this check. <laughs> And mine is towards investments. It's towards the business. Yeah. It's towards life insurance. It's towards um, properties. We make big decisions off the money that I make, but our day-to-day -day living, we have not changed in any way, shape, or form. I think that's so important. Too. Yes. It is. And like I said, I, I look at the books of a lot of agents and, you know, on the side, again, I'm active duty, but I started that bookkeeping business and I look at the books of a lot of agents and you get these large checks and a lot of agents are single parents or, you know, they're single income households and they live paycheck to paycheck. They want or need this money to, to pay, you know, bills and rent and everything like that. But then they don't realize that, well, I got to pay taxes. I got to hold out and pay, you know, self-employment taxes and medic, all that Medicare, Medicaid, that still has to get paid. And a lot of people don't know what to do with that. And you mismanage your books, you're in a whole heap of trouble. Um, and I think that understanding and educating yourself on business operations <laughs> would be very key and very crucial to a lot of agents that are either just starting out or not really sure how it's supposed to work. So when so, I tell my story, I try not to, I always tell them that I'm an anomaly because of having this available. And I'm very transparent about that. I don't want you to think that you can, you, maybe you can, I don't know, because that's not my story. So I only tell my story because that's what it is. But I do let them know that if I did not have the steady income, I have a lot of people who I think are better salesmen than I am, who would do fantastic as real estate agents, but they're also the head of households of their house and they can't take that risk because they don't have the, they don't have the income coming in from an, an, an 04 going on to 05 officer in the military. That's a significant income, whether it's, you know, a solo household or not. So there's a level of protection that just came from her being in the military, which I, that's the only way this happens. I don't know any other way. Wow. So <clears throat> Corinne, what type of, aside from, I got so many questions up here. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. <clears throat> because I, like he said, it is important to have that mate, right? If you were talking to another married couple, no matter what the spouse, whether it's the husband or wife, what are a few pieces of advice you would get the non-agent to be ready for to support the agent? Um, be ready for long nights. Okay. 
be ready to be flexible with your time because there are times where we're out to dinner or, you know, it's supposed to be our time or something like that. And the phone will ring. And one of Jared's strong points is, is that he's accessible. He answers his phone. He's gotten so many deals just because he answered his phone. A lot of real estate agents are looking for that. You know, I want those bankers hours. I want to work when I want to work, but that's not necessarily the case for entrepreneurs. You got to remember that as a real estate agent, you're still an entrepreneur. And so you still are a business owner and like any other business owner, they're going to be long hours sometimes. Um, so you got to prepare for that. You got to prepare for being flexible with the time and sharing that time, you know, with others until you can get that steady automated type of business flowing. And if you love what you do, like he does, even though you do have automation, you're still going to be sharing your time. And so it sucks at times, but if that's his I'm passion, <laughs> that sounds so it, it does, but it, that's his passion and that's his heart. And he's doing this and building this for like our family. And I see he's so good at it. I see what he does. I see his drive. His drive started a long time ago. Like I said, I, I when I met him, <clears throat> he had it. I didn't know what it was, but he had it. And <clears throat> being able to share him I mean it's it's a blessing honestly when I look at it because there are people who want that who are looking for that how can we help others and I got to look at the end of the day it's not about me nothing is about me you know I'm here I'm part of it but it really is not about me but how old are your kids nine and seven okay so is there such thing as a work-life balance for you guys? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I will say this. I, I have to do better. This can't be my forever as far as the way my time is sent out. And I know that. I'm in year four. They're nine and they're seven. Um, after school activities are coming. They're, they're, they're here. They're coming. I have to be, and I do make, when we're in season, like for sports or something, I don't miss practices and I don't miss games. That's a rule. I don't miss those things. And that does equate to losing out on opportunities that might exist. But <clears throat> where I'm at my level, my career now, that's more okay than it was Previously. back when it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, still to the point, um, work-life balance is possible. Mm -hmm. I'm just not there where it needs to be yet, but I'm building towards that. This, this, this thing is still in its preemie stages. I have goals and aspirations of, of expansion and I have goals and, exp uh, um, and trying to get more people. My goal, one of the goals for this year in 2022 um, that we wrote down for our goals was to give more people opportunity. And if I'm going to give more people opportunity, I have to become a bigger umbrella to be able to provide those opportunities for others. So I'm still growing, I'm still learning, I'm still having to go to conferences to learn from people who are doing this at a much higher level than I am. I'm still a baby in this thing. And while what we've done has been great, there's so much room for growth and I'm still moving that goalpost further and further back to expand for more opportunities for others to grow as well. Wow. <clears throat> Corinne, mm -hmm. when you retire, from the military. Uh, you, know this is going. <laughs> you know it's coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> Will you get your license? So, no, I won't okay. get my license. Um, because I told him, well, I, I, I don't know. I'm finding this out the same time you are. So, no. <laughs> to this so you let me know. Keep on asking. I'm going to keep on listening and we're going to adjust accordingly because I have no idea where this is going. So please continue doing your job. Okay. I got you, man. I appreciate you, boss. So we have talked about it. Stop looking like that. I'm just listening. This is news. We have talked about me working in the business with him and, and being full time. So I have taken the real estate classes. So that I know what I'm talking about. I do take phone calls. I take leads sometimes. Um, I do, you know, 
follow-ups, I do the phone calls, I do cleaning of leads sometimes so that I'm able to, you know, speak the lingo. So I'm like the, um, the jack of all trades without a license kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm able to do the phone calls and talk to the people and pass them over to lenders. And, and I do some of that connection. Um, we talked about me actually working, you know, with the license and everything. And I won't rule that out. Let's put it that way. I won't rule that out. Um, I would prefer him to go and get a broker's license so we can expand that way. But he doesn't want to do that. Basically, if we end up, you know, doing associate broker or that type of thing, it'll probably end up being me. So I would get the license for a convenience factor, but I don't know how much of transactions, transactions probably wouldn't be I would ran through her, it. but just to have it to do it as a convenience factor factor to, you know, help go show at, a, you know, an inopportune time or maybe sit in a home inspection or something like that for them, you know, just to help them out that way. And just keep the license for the length of time needed. I think it's three years three for years. the broker and, and just go ahead and get the broker license just so that they have that certification within the company. Yes, I, I, I don't rule it out, but I like being behind the scenes. I like being, you know, the numbers person and, you know, keeping track of, you know, how many transactions we've done, who's gotten paid, how bills are paid, you know money being, you know, coming in, that type of stuff, making sure his agents are getting paid, making sure he's getting paid, just doing that type of stuff. I, I like doing that. I like organizing and I'm good at it. So I just stay in my lane. And I'm not a salesperson. <coughs> I hate it. I hate talking to people, you know, cause you get the phone calls when people hang up on you or they cuss you out and you're just like, this is not for me. I did not <laughs> sign up to get cussed out at eight o'clock in the morning. I just can't, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> and to be clear, like with what she does within JMD elite, the, the people who need to get in contact with somebody who's going to make a decision I don't usually get that call. It's typically it's her. Me. If my broker is calling or my brokerage is calling to try to get a hold of somebody, Jared, where's Corinne? Jared, is Corinne out on duty today? Can we call her? I'm, I'm right here. You're talking to me. You want to have a call? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want these problems. Let me just go ahead and talk to your wife. That'd be great. Thanks. All right. Fine. Whatever. But the owner of RKW calls to speak. I, I, make, I make the sales. <laughs> I get the awards. Why don't you want to talk to me? I'm so good. But it is what it is. I've learned to totally accept it that they know how to get things done. And it's probably not this path. This path isn't going to lead you the right way. So um, it's, it's great that she does what she does for the team. That's pretty cool because <laughs> most brokers would be like, no, we can't talk to her. She's not licensed. You know what I mean? Never have had that. Never issue. happened. <laughs> <laughs> They don't want those problems. That's not a good They've look. <laughs> what um, what's the next hire for JMW Elite? JMD Elite, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we need another buyer's agent. Okay. Um, I just hired a personal assistant. Literally just had my first week this week with him. Um, we're three days in, and I'm telling you, the stress levels have already come down tremendously in the three days that he's been here um, working on the. So we talked about that work-life balance. <clears throat> that mm -hmm. was one of the decisions, hiring a personal assistant that was made to help with that work-life balance. And, you know, he made that goal of trying to be there more and, you know, being more. So hiring that personal assistant. That's been huge. Right. So we're, we're three days <laughs> in. I just had the three day call with the people who I, um, who I hired to find this person for me. And I just gave the biggest Raven review of Mr. Ruel. He met my team this week during our first team meeting. He saw how weird we are. We're a weird group of people. Um, and he just jumped right in. And you would have thought he's been there forever. Um, so that was the, the most recent hire. But the next one will be a buyer's agent. And then once again, I, I'm speaking this thing until it happens. I'm working on expansion. I am going to be going into other markets. Um, whether I think the next one I think is DC. I think that's where I'm heading, but it may not be, but I'm going somewhere and I'm going to need somebody who's flexible enough to be able to carry that to their, to that next location in some way, shape or form. So even if I have to hire 
what it's what it's looking like is I'm going to go to a market center and I'm going to see who wants some assistance in growing their business. And I'm going to provide them the covering of JMD Elite to join into our business. And they will have everything that they need in whatever location we're at, because we have systems that are strong enough in place to go to different states, to different locations. And if we find, if we find the talent, we can probably make, make that work. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it to get the personal assistant? <laughs> I mean, that's a great question. So it's probably a little bit of both. Um, I'm a, mm, do I want to tell my life? <laughs> I, so I tried to do that internally. Um, dang. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you can't always hire family and friends, <laughs> that rule when you have a business and you're trying to hire family and friends, it just it doesn't work out. There's the too much the familiarity yeah. there. There's too much of a comfort level there that there's not a sense of urgency when needed. It doesn't seem like it's a real job when it's family and friends. So, you know, we tried that option and it just never works out. And so it was, we, we got to go outside of, you know, with the amount of emails he sends, the amount of, you know, follow-ups and updates and everything that you're I live off this calendar. And if this calendar is not right, it will cause yeah. all types I of I mean, problems. from doctor's appointments to like everything has to be in there, you know, and when we have leads that come in and they're going to Jared because, you know, we farm them to the different agents that we have. But if the lead comes to Jared, we got to be able to have like a, a lot of one of the things that are is awesome that they are able to reach into each person's calendar and just plug and play whatever the appointments are able to be. And that way we don't have to like that's how our system is set up and designed that we all have access to everybody's calendar. So if something comes down, I can scroll and look at everybody's calendar and say, oh, okay, Jarrett can handle this one. Or, okay, Melanie can handle this or Beverly can handle this, you know, that kind of thing. So it was really important to have somebody that can run all those calendars, send all those emails, you know, because again, I still got a full-time military job plus my business plus home. And then JMD Elite. So it, there's a lot there. So we, I needed extra help. He needed extra help. So it was a perfect win-win. Yeah. So, the, so does the personal assistant help both of you or it helps Jared be able to help you? Exactly. Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got gotcha. you. What is the goal for 20? Uh, what is the goal for 2022? Well, we kind of, like you said, we, we wanted to, we want to get into this expansion. We want to break into another market, find somebody who has the talent and the drive and kind of vibes with us as well um, that need the help and they're looking to grow and use us as a covering, you know, to be able to branch out. Like you said, our, our systems in place right now are strong enough to move <clears throat> into other states. Um, so we're, we're hoping to be fully location agnostic. Um, but right now we, we have the systems in place that could expand out to the Northern parts of Virginia into the DC, Maryland area. Um, so expansion definitely looks to be really high on the list. We had talked about giving away $75,000 yes. as well. Um, that community. equates to, let, let's go ahead and tell okay, you that okay. that equates to anywhere from 115 to 125. On units wise, um, that also equates to sales volume of around 50 million. Wow. Yeah. You were going somewhere with that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you off. So community is huge <clears throat> for us. Um, we are firm believers like being, like he said, being Christian, uh, giving away your time, talent, and your treasure. Uh, at least 10% of that. 10% of my time, 10% of my talent, 10% of my treasure. Um, so we teach classes. As a matter of fact, we have another class this Saturday, mm -hmm. um, a small business or uh, aspiring entrepreneurs class. We teach people how to get grants and stuff um, for uh, entrepreneurship. Um, we teach how to work your LLCs, how to do your taxes, what to look for, how to do bookkeeping. Um, so it's not just real estate. We teach people how to run a business. Like I said, we've seen the, the failures and the successes and the difference between the two is always the business the behind the scenes. The foundation has to be set correctly. And if it's not 
it doesn't matter what you do on the top. You can be, I, I know, and it sounds, I'm not throwing shade on anybody. I'm not using names or anything like that, but there's real estate agents who do nearly the amount of transactions that I do who are still living paycheck to paycheck and are broke and are broke. And that's just, I don't understand. Now I'm not rich, but I'm not broke. And we don't teach this <clears throat> in our community. This yes. is not taught in the black community how to handle finances, how to walk into the room and talk with the people at the table. Everybody keeps talking about, oh, get a seat at the table, get a seat at the table. Well, Jared was a firm believer of having his own table, but they have to be able to recognize that you have a table. And in order for you to have a table, you got to know the business. You have to know what, you know, is being talked about. You got to know what they do. Do what they do so that we can bring this back to our community and start teaching our community about it. So that that was a big thing. We're, we're yeah. very much big givers. And so the 75,000 was our number for giving. And we reverse engineered that back. And of course, like he said, it, it equaled out to about 115, 125 transactions and almost 50 million in volume. Um, but expansion, we hope can help counter a lot of that. But so expansion came almost as a secondary based off of how much we want to give back because that's the first thing that we look for and the way to do that we had creative ideas and we were he was like expansion i have a an idea and so he kind of set off going to family reunion to start learning about expansion opportunities and how that works and and networking with people to to do an expansion do you currently get coaching or have you had coaching <laughs> On the side of real estate business, I have counsel. I have consultations. Okay. Um, I have a running consultation with one of the um, previous bold coaches um, who doesn't coach for bold anymore. Um, we speak on a, probably a monthly basis, and then I also have mentors for business and and mindset. Mine is I'm a huge mindset person. Being able to think to um, think bigger is what she's talked about a lot today, but also being able to think at levels when the emotions are at its highest and still being able to stay level-minded in the transaction and not allow those emotions to bleed into your decision-making, still being able to make the appropriate decision um, minus the, the wear and tear of what emotion can bring to it. Um, I use the example that I'm loving I'm caring. I am giving. I am all these things, but my standards don't have an emotion. So I set the standards early and I don't allow the standard to ever change. And whether I am all these things emotionally wise, I'm probably one of the most emotional men that you'll probably ever meet. I, I feel everything. I'm an impasse. I feel every, every emotion that comes through, but my standards don't have any of those emotions. So I set the standard and then I allow whatever happens to meet or not meet the standard and the decisions are made based off of that. So being able to think on those lines is huge for me. Um, having conversations about business and um, our owner of KW, he's, he's pretty good with making sure he touches, he saw something pretty early. I think after the, the four to 25, I caught his attention. Wait a minute, that's not normal. He sat down with us and he started bringing us into different business ventures that we probably would have never heard of or had. And I've made some bold things that probably caught his attention. Um, probably at a time when he did not have somebody who was willing to say or speak or say certain things. Um, I reached out to him directly. Sir, what is your stance on this? I haven't heard you talk about this. Where do you have concerns towards my community and concerns to what's going on right now in our nation? Like really put them, right in the forefront. I haven't heard anything from you. You tell me so I can govern myself accordingly. And that boldness really caught his eye. Mm -hmm. And from there, he knows the Caldwells can give him a straight answer, whether he's the, the richest man in the room or not, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say what needs to be said. And he respects that out of me. And so we, we, have, we have pretty good conversations. We, we don't talk nearly as much as we used to when I was growing this, um, but it's not because he's not available. I can call my broker owner right now, and he's going to see it's my call. And if he doesn't answer, I would expect a phone call back in 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Probably asking to speak to Corinne. 
more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's Quinn? Where's she at? You guys both there? Okay, great. You're both there. Great. Hey, what's going on, Jared? <laughs> That's how that conversation goes. Let me ask you a question. And both of you can answer it because you may have different stances. What can we do to increase the housing gap, to decrease the housing gap for African-Americans and the rest of our counterparts? Jack, go first. So um, I spoke on this a lot uh, in any <coughs> venue and avenue that I could, and it ended up leading me becoming the diversity chair I'm not an agent, but I'm never <laughs> she did. How did she get that position? Um, not an agent in Keller Williams, and yet she still <laughs> becomes the Keller Williams diversity chair in the Virginia area. So not just the, the brokerage, but for the region. So wow. I was the, uh, basically, I, I helped run the, the region. I was one of the, the regional ambassadors for Keller Williams for diversity. Can we repeat one more time? Not an agent with <laughs> Keller Williams. I didn't get asked this job. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Sorry. So, <laughs> um, I speak on this a lot. And I really feel like I, I, I hold or I held, I, I haven't in a while, but I held monthly <clears throat> sessions where we were educating agents on how they are, no kidding, the gatekeepers to this disparaging gap between African Americans. And, and the black community owning property and owning homes. And they a lot of them don't realize that some of these laws and things that were already in place are still working against us today, but they can combat that by learning this stuff and educating themselves. You know, we, we talked about, you know, The Color of Law is a, is a awesome book. Uh, Rothstein is his last name. I can't remember his first name, but it's called The Color of Law. And it literally breaks down how previous history and previous laws that were in place about zoning and redlining and that type of stuff are still in place and, and occurring today. And we don't even realize it just because we were not educated on it. Everybody wants to educate on the business and how to make money. A lot of people see the benefits that real estate or being an agent can, can bring you. I mean, he talks about it all the time. Where can you invest and get, how, what's the saying you always say? Six to 12% yeah, of an nine, investment. Nine to 12% on our um, Every year. yielding on our sales and You can't go anywhere market. and get that outside of real estate. And so people <clears> see <throat> that and they just think of the money. But again, we came in this knowing that this wasn't about us. This is about our community. This is about how much we give, how much we give back. And again, that plays a huge part in our grind and how we work and how successful, quote unquote, your business is. But educating a lot of these agents about these disparities, like whites and blacks alike had no idea that redlining still exists, that rezoning still exists. I mean, look at Wells Fargo. They the, just told their refinancing half of the black people who tried to refinance um, with Wells Fargo over the time frame when <laughs> the, the rate, interest rates were as lowest were declined. Were declined. <clears throat> You know, and then they came back out and, and apologize and people are like knowing and paying attention to a lot of this and educating yourself on this. Like you'd be surprised. Just it's not things that are not unethical. But you probably shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Because you are contributing to redlining or you're contributing to, you know, social segregation and, and zoning and that type of thing. And they don't realize it. And so we kind of try to teach that, you know, don't say this, say this. You know, there's no such thing as everybody says, oh, I want to go to a good school district. Well, what does that mean? Yes, we need do to you realize what it, the numbers that are graded on the school district are set by, you know, state and federal and, you know, community standards and how it looks based off of how much money they get. And then how much money they get is based off of how much taxes they pay. The taxes they pay is based off of the zoning that they have and who can live there and who can afford to live there and who can't afford to live there. People who have section eight housing in their zoning districts get less money from the government because the money goes into keeping those section eight. So they pay lower in property taxes so that less money goes to them, the school there. It's a, a continuing cycle. It's a never ending cycle for our generation and our community. And if we are educated on that 
and being able to stop somebody in their tracks and say, what do you mean by a good school? Because a good school, just because they have a lower number, the number equates to how much money they get and how they're able to pass the tests and the resources that they have, the state exams and stuff based off of the resources that they have, not whether or not it's a good school. Do you know what I mean? And so it, it's- Bad neighborhoods. That's, or, that's the big one that you get all the time. I don't want to be in a bad neighborhood. I don't know what that means. Please educate me on what <laughs> you mean this to be. And then I will go ahead and give it. So to jump off, yes, yeah, she has a, a bigger all-encompassing um, with educating other- real estate agents and things along those lines, which is great. Um, I take it personal. I talk to all of my clients and I have real candid conversations. Um, we speak about what is exactly going on, why we don't have the opportunities that others have and how we can educate through this process of you purchasing this home. So then after you're done purchasing this home, you can though go and tell somebody else that it's not nearly as hard and difficult as it's been um, made out to be um, by the Casper the Friendly Ghosts out there, because these are just ghosts who are stating these things and it's not reality. Um, so I personally educate through the entirety of the process. I have real life conversations, I have real life examples, and I show them, even when it gets a little bit difficult for them, I help them through that process. I hold their hands through the entirety of the process. And each and every person that we help and we serve and we assist, they are also getting an education in real estate. They're getting an education in investing. They're getting an education in resale all at once. So let's talk about the Wells Fargo right quick. Why is it that they can come out and apologize and we go back? Let me give you the example. <laughs> Let me give you an example. If it was Liberty Bank yes. or One United, mm -hmm. we would have heard more. Yes, sir. And it would have came from not, us. This it would have came from us. This is not the first time doing this. this. Nope. They have stolen <clears throat> from their own, I don't, I mean, I call them clients, but their own customers. <laughs> They've stolen from them um, through transactions that's been completed. They've had their own, um, people who work for them push different um, schemes upon the customers to, to make more money. And, and the president and the CEO gets up there every single time and does a quick apology and they go about their business. Why is that? That's a great question. Um, when you're looking at refinancing and things along those lines, one of the things that I educate on with my clients is using <clears throat> the relationships that I've built and that I've taken the time to, to grow and allow that to be your relationship now. Um, I have a personal relationship with the president of OVM Financial, which is one of our top lenders here in the Hampton Roads area. And if I ask for something, if I called the president of OVM Financial, who does millions upon millions of dollars a deal every single year, if I call him right now, what's up, Jared? How you doing? What can I do? How can I assist? Immediately. And I have that with about three or four other lenders here. Working locally versus towards these big banks is the way to alleviate a lot of the issues that we have. But before me becoming an agent, as I speak to you right now, all of my money is in USAA or Navy Federal because that's who they told us to go to. I know better now and I still haven't pulled all my money. And I know that they don't have my best interest in mind is the best way to say that. Um, <clears throat> but with that being said, we don't know better, so we don't do better. So it becomes my responsibility to educate them that here's how we beat this. You can go ahead and you can get this refinance. You can do A, B, and C. I'm not telling you to go to Bank of America. I don't, Bank of America don't owe me nothing. USAA doesn't owe me nothing. Navy Federal doesn't. But you know who might owe me something? That person who I sent 12 deals to this month or that person who I sent 10 deals to this month, and they're gonna make sure you're taken care of because if I hear a bad report back from them, I might draw back. Money drives everything. So if I'm driving money to your business, I'm expecting you to take care of my clients. And if you don't take care of my clients, then you're gonna hear back from me, not in words, but in the amount of business that I pass your way. And they know that. It's an it's a, it's a unsaid said. So for anyone that's listening, 
that would like to be a part of your expansion um, as an agent. <laughs> I ain't I ain't know we was going here. Go ahead, sir. Not hey, it's I appreciate not you, man. <laughs> if anyone who wants to be a part of your expansion or would like to touch bases and see if you guys mesh, how can they reach you? Sure. So um, <clears throat> I, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. Um, you can always contact me directly. I am I am king of giving away my cell phone number. I don't give you fake numbers. I give you my personal cell phone number. My name is Jared Caldwell. My telephone number is area code 618-558-1177. You can call me at any time. She hates that, but it's the truth. And I'm going to answer. Um, you can find me, Jared underscore realtor, Jared Caldwell underscore realtor um, on Instagram. Um, Facebook, you can just check out Jared Caldwell. I'm one of two Jared Caldwells on Facebook right now. The other one's a dentist. We're good friends. He's in Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, but I'm the other one. I'm the real estate agent in Hampton. And um, look me up. Give me a phone call. Website um, has recently changed. So I'm going to look at it. I sent it to you as to what my new real um, website is, but it literally just changed two days ago. So I'm going to look that up for you. But give me two seconds here. And while you're looking it up, Corinne, yes, how can a real estate agent who needs help with their bookkeeping reach you? Uh, again, I'm on Facebook as well. Uh, I have Instagram, but I don't do anything on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a big social media person, but I am on Facebook. You can look me up. Otherwise, you can uh, shoot me an email. First name is Corinne, K-E-R-R-I-N dot J3K at gmail.com. So shoot me an email and I'm more than happy to answer. I won't give out my phone number, <laughs> um, but shoot me an email. You can call Jared. You can call me. Jared will <laughs> answer his phone. <laughs> he will always answer, but we're here if you need us. I think you've called me several times. I, I don't miss, do I? I answer my no, phone. No, he pick up. Miss. I don't no, miss. Picks up. Um, website, recent change, um, www.hamptonroadsareahomefinder.com. That's Hampton Roads area, Hampton Roads area homefinder.com. Um, my previous email or previous website, which is still active right now, is www.buyandsellwithjaredcaldwell.com. Um, both of those you have access to my information. Um, we are transitioning from one to another, but that's neither here nor there. That's for business purposes. Um, we found out that people like to search the area in which you live, it just makes more sense. So we're working towards that. Gotcha. <clears throat> Well, guys, I've enjoyed this. A lot of great insight on working as a team and then working as a team with support of the spouse, Corinne. Um, I learned a lot from this interview and hopefully our listeners do as well. Um, you've been listening to the Real Estate Pod Rose podcast with Kevin Jefferson and Corinne and Jared Caldwell. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Yes, thank Bye. you. Thank you for watching the Real Estate Proverbs podcast with Kevin Jefferson. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when the latest video drops.